want to encourage people working, we want to encourage you to make more income, and then you put a small fee on the things we don't want, such as waste. You mentioned the Samsung deal uh, yeah. earlier in your comments, Are you? and I, I was unclear whether or not you thought it was a good idea or a bad I idea. I do think it's a good idea. That's the thing. Like, I, I'm not just going to bash it because, you know, it's, it's a different party than me. I think that's great. We should have more investment in the province. We should definitely have investment in green technology. I'm not going to bash that at all. I just think we can build upon that. And it's, you know, it's an example of what is good, and it's exactly an example of what the future is. It's the 21st century economy. Let's, let's build upon that. Let's not just throw money at whatever old business needs it. Let's look at the kind of society we want and invest in those kinds of things. When you go door to door, all of you, are you still hearing a lot of concerns about health care? Is that still something that people bring up? Actually, uh, it's been astonishing. Uh, this election, what I hear most at the doors, uh, don't let them close the public libraries. Don't let them cut TTC service. They are really horrified well, what they're hitting a city those, hall. Those are city yeah, things. And, you're not, you know. But that's what they're coming uh, with me at. They're really worried about this. They, they see a politician yeah, and want to complain, the, right? And they don't know federal, <laughs> provincial. They, they see me and they say, Mike, don't let them close my libraries. What are they going to do? My snow shoving is going to be removed. So yeah, they're yeah, saying, yeah. please protect our public services. That's been the number one issue. But, and not health care. You're not hearing that health care issues I, I, are... In past years... Even though the costs are going up, yeah. uh, uh, the, the outgoing president of the Canadian Medical Association had this indictment of the entire Medicare system right across the country saying it was a massive confusion and didn't know where it was going and is not heading in the right direction. And but, you're not you know, hearing it at the It's the front door? page of the paper every day, every newscast, <clears> you know, <throat> the marathon meetings at City Hall. Uh, all they hear about is maybe they're going to lose their uh, recreation program, they're going to lose the snow removal. Yeah. They are really worried about uh, l cuts. That's what they're okay, talking well, about. Okay, yeah. well, all right, but that's, you know, what are your, that's, that's what out of your bailiwick. Me. Who wants to talk about health care? Yeah. Well, let me see your hands. I'd like to talk okay, about all right, well, let's go I to mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how uh, you haven't heard people uh, talking about health care because, first of all, it's a single most important issue as identified by recent polls in Ontario and so it's in our writing. Uh, they have problems with a 12-hour waiting room in emergency, uh, in emergency rooms. That's, that's actually a problem that I've identified. They have problems with uh, waiting. We have 10,000 people waiting. Well, we know all that. Care. What would you do to change exactly. some of that? Well, we need an investment. We know we need, what the problem is. Exactly. We need upfront investments. We need uh, frontline investments to take care of that. What we're proposing is that we're going to cut the uh, waiting time for the emergency rooms in half. Uh, in the past year, what we've seen, we've seen 2,000 nurses actually out of the healthcare system. That's what's happened. We're prepared to bring that back to redo some of the damage that's happened How to the healthcare pay systems. How are you going to pay for that? Actually, and as we talked about, you brought before the uh, corporate tax, I think we should stop this madness. I don't think that doing the same thing over and over again and hoping for different results. Actually, that's the definition of insanity, as Einstein says. So how about we focus on what's important to people? And how about we focus on what really brings results? And use I some of that revenue that you would course. recapture from corporations right. to do that? Of course. Yeah, OK. Josh Rackless, uh, well, do I you want to talk about health care? Uh, sure. I OK. Mean, <laughs> I'm not trying to talk you into anything. No, I'm yeah, I think asking. I mean part of the reason you might not be hearing about it is because uh, mm -hmm. You know, if people really care about health care, they're probably in the hospital, and now it's a big issue. It's like, well, well I don't you know. think so. I think you don't, you don't have to be in a hospital to care about health care. No, I, but I think that might also be a sign that, you know, we're not doing too bad with health care. Uh, not to, you know, compliment the liberals too much, but if people aren't complaining about it, if people are just saying, well, my taxes are too high, that might be a kind of a sign that, well, you know, health care is not in that bad shape. But the Green Party does believe that we can always do better. Uh, their focus, as I've touched upon in my introduction, is on illness prevention. If we can make people healthier, less likely to get sick, you know, a dollar spent on that is worth many times uh, the money you'd have to spend to actually take care of someone when they're sick. So, and, and caring for the environment is the, another way that we can prevent people from getting sick. And at the same time, we'd uh, encourage more use of sort of community hubs where your, your doctor will work in a team with other healthcare providers, and that way you'll get more efficient a more cost-efficient and more timely care rather than just everything being Since divided. Since we can't seem to find family doctors for everybody. Exactly. Yeah. And so this is a way that we can right. provide more care to more people. Rocco Rossi, do you want to talk about health care? Uh, absolutely. All right. Because well, I hear it, I hear it at the door every day. And as someone who spent well, are four you and a half... are it or you're just No, no, no. That's it. coming from people because, yeah. you know, and as someone who uh, was CEO of the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Ontario for four and a half years, 
this is something that's very near and dear to my heart. As we age as a population, whether it's ourselves, we may not be in the hospital, but our parents are, or a relative is, or we know uh, of someone, and it also happens to be almost half of the entire provincial budget. So it is a critical, crucial issue to look at. And let's look at, at the, uh, the precise recommendations that we're making. One is obviously on the preventative side, and again, as someone who came from heart and stroke, I'm an enormous believer in that. Two, though, is we want to encourage people to keep their parents at home for as long as possible. So we want to double the tax credit for uh, home caregivers. Uh, that will help families you know, uh, cover, that, cover that burden and keep people out of long-term care in hospitals. So that's step number one. Step number two is actually well, no, the, I increase. I hope this isn't a list that goes on no, 20 minutes. No, it's just minutes. three. Okay, all right. Step number okay. two is increase, yeah. increase long-term care by 40,000 beds. Step number three, eliminate the LINs. We've wasted $300 million, the Liberal government, $300 million on a layer of bureaucracy that doesn't see a single patient, doesn't perform a single operation, and that money needs to go into frontline care. It needs to go into long-term beds. It needs to go into doctors, nurses. That's how we're going to approach the system. Okay. Michael, let's come back to you with some of the things your party is going to do about health care. Well, well, basically, our party uh, has been very clear in saying that uh, we believe in uh, public health care uh, that is uh, universal and innovative. And that's why we've invested in new family health teams uh, where you have nurse, practitioners, doctors working as a team. We've opened one up just on Eglinton recently. Uh, they're opening up all of the province. We've got 1.3 million more Ontarians that have a family doctor than they did uh, eight years ago. Uh, we're uh, helping seniors with a uh, renovation uh, tax grant so they can stay in their home longer, $1,500. And we've got this innovative program that came out of Dr. Mark, uh, who's from Sprint, where we're going to introduce house calls, an old-fashioned idea that's going to save money rather than a senior having to go to hospital and get an appointment. We're going to have doctors come to the home and see that frail and elderly senior. How and, much money are you spending on that, well, for example? Th th we'll probably save a lot more money than we'll spend because well, in emergency time, they won't be going sitting in yeah. emergency. The doctor, in fact, the pilot project out of Sprint in North Toronto has uh, proven that you can save money, and that's why we're adopting across the province. But I heard from the health minister the amount of money is about $30 million, right? Yeah, to get the program started. To, but in yeah. the long run, there are savings in having these doctor's house calls. And the other thing that really works well in my community, uh, Dale, I've got these amazing centers called community health centers. I've got the Unison Health Center in uh, Lawrence Heights and the Ann Johnson Health Center on Young Street, where you have dental work, you have uh, uh, nurse practitioners, you have hygienists, you have nutritionists in the community hub where people can go without an appointment and they don't have to go to a hospital and that is a very effective okay. investment we have. Community health centers. All right, here's some health related questions here. I better get them on as well. Here's Arena uh, calling from the riding. Arena, what is your question for the candidates? Hi, um, I heard that some of the candidates mentioned that they're going to distribute their money uh, accordingly to to doctors, but as well as frontline staff. But the truth is that CEOs are actually making like six-figure salaries, while this frontline staff are actually being cut. They're being fired. How do you like? I don't understand. How do you uh, justify this unfair treatment of of our workers? Okay when you put the CEO's salary next to somebody on the front line of health care. Uh, what would you say to that, Gertie? Right. Uh, we'd like to put a stop to that. We believe that that money is much better invested in front line. But you uh, still got to pay a good buck to get a of CEO, course, don't you? Of course, you? but not uh, millions and millions of dollars. Actually, if we just stop the increases and the bonuses, that accounts to $80 million just for the CEOs of public-run uh, businesses. So that's $80 million that could have put it to better Public use. run businesses. Yes. Public, Beyond health care, you mean? No, no. Public run entities like uh, hospitals. Yeah, but including other public entities as well. Yes, that's including other entities. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, public, uh, um, public corporations. That's All right. Okay. That uh, Josh Rackless, uh, what would you say to that disparity between. Well, the I mean, two? It, it sounds to me like uh, you've got some CEOs that are, you know, they're being probably very well paid because they're in charge of a lot of people, huge bureaucracy. The Green Party believes in bringing it back down to communities, having smaller uh, organizations that can respond 
more nimbly and more efficiently to the needs of, uh, of their people. So, you know, you get people on the ground, and like we were talking about uh, little community health groups where people are working together, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you can get to know them, and you can get uh, the treatment you need more efficiently. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we'd have to look at, do we need these CEOs that are running these giant health networks that maybe aren't even responding to the needs of people? Well, certainly it's annoying to a lot of people, the disparity, you know, in what somebody takes home in, in their paycheck between the CEO and the frontline um, health care workers. How, how should that be addressed, Michael? Well, you know, it's obviously a sore point, and uh, I, I agree that uh, many of them are paid too much at uh, some of the salaries I've seen. I also know, like I've got a CEO at uh, Baycrest Hospital, Dr. Bill Reichman. Yes. Uh, every cent that he's paid uh, is worth it. I mean, he is an incredible innovator. He's attracting the best scientists from all over the world to come to Baycrest. So, uh, and he, we brought him in from Princeton in the States. And so, uh, you know, I'm, you can't judge them all, but some of them are obviously overpaid. But uh, Dr. Bill Reichman at uh, Baycrest, whatever he's making, he's worth it. Okay. My right, grandmother right. lives at Baycrest, so keep that guy. Yeah. Okay, keep that guy. Nice. All right, okay, we'll make a list later, okay, I guess. We'll I, don't, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, so Rocco Rossi, what about them. this whole situation? Look, the, the Liberals have had eight years in government. If, if Mike Cole is aware of those who are overpaid, he should be pointing them out. The Liberal government should be pointing it out. Instead, They've been growing the bureaucracy. They've introduced these, these LINs with high-priced high people who are not seeing patients, who are not providing surgeries. $300 million. They've tripled the number of people making over $100,000 in the greater government bureaucracy. So if there was supposed to be control, you've had eight years. You had a choice, sir. You didn't do anything about it. That's part of the reason this government's got to so go. So is your question really, what are those people at, Lynn, at, at the various Lins doing? What, are, that, they, what are they What are they? doing? We know, we know exactly what they're doing. Whenever this government has a bad news announcement around health care, it has the Lins announce it. Anytime there's something good to announce, they have their own MPPs go out and announce it. The Lins are there strictly as a political buffer to try to make this government look okay. good. They Let's are not the, providing a service. Let's hear the counter-argument to well, that, Mike Cole. I mean, uh, Mr. Rossi and the uh, Tories are great at talking about uh, these regional decision-making bodies we have because we don't believe that all the decisions should be made at Queen's Park for Thunder Bay, Cornwall. I think there's got to be local decisions made about health care delivery. And when the Conservatives were in power last, they made all the decisions in some basement at Queen's Park and, and I remember the middle of the night, uh, 1997, they Why was closed. Why there a basement? Yeah, we, don't want to we talk couldn't about find that. them. 27, oh. 28 hospitals were closed by the Tory uh, health uh, bosses at Queen's Park. No consultation with the local hospitals. We lost Northwestern Hospital, Branson Hospital, uh, Doctors Hospital, Wellesley Hospital. They made that decision centrally at Queen's Park. We think it's important to have decisions about your health care made locally. This is a huge province. And uh, I think if you centralize health delivery, you're going to basically make mistakes and you're going to have bureaucrats inside but, the government. But the government still has to maintain some control over those lists. Well, we do. Assuredly. We, you know? The Ministry of Health And you does. appoint the people who yeah. sit on the boards, right? And they work together with the Ministry of Health, but the decisions about delivery locally Our best have input. Made by the, okay. Input comes from the regions. Right. Gertie, yes. what do you think about these LINs? Well, we believe that local targeted um, health care service is very important, but uh, the LINs as organizations themselves, we have multiple reports that prove that they are inefficient, that prove that this, uh, the CEOs of the LINs and these structures take about $26 billion from the government and they pay little to no accountability for that money because of the structure that's been set up this way. And uh, we believe that this structure doesn't work. So it's a good idea if it were fixed? Is that what you're saying? No, we should have targeted um, health care. Yeah. But the LIN uh, structure right now, it doesn't work. All right. But, uh, but what I'm saying is you would fix it or just get rid of it? I think we probably get rid of it as it is. Get rid of it as it is and come up with Maybe an idea come back with something to else. provide something which they can, we can hold accountable to the okay. government. Josh Rackless, what do you think? I think this whole discussion is just evidence that we need a green perspective in, in Parliament because 
you know, people are panicking. How do we manage all the people who are sick? How do we deal with this huge bureaucracy? If we focus more on the green ideals of clean water, clean air, walkable communities, healthy foods, locally grown foods, organic foods, we'd have a lot fewer people sick, and it wouldn't be as big, a, a big, as, as big an issue. Well, maybe at some time in the rosy future that would be true, right? Well, when I'm yeah. elected, then... Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But the, the, the overarching health care issue, uh, I think, is, and I, one of you mentioned it, uh, almost half of every program dollar in Ontario is spent on health care. And when you watch...